Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the new offset feature to create a knockout text design. This design has been very popular in the Cricut community for a while, and it's nice to be able to do this much quicker in Cricut Design Space. I decided to make this mom plaque, which is such a fun gift idea for Mother's Day. I saw a lot of people making these last year. Let me know if you've been making them this year also. First, what I'm going to do is go over to shapes and grab a square. I'm going to make this the size of my subway tile, which is what I'll be putting my vinyl onto. I'm going to go up to my sizing and hit unlock. The width is 16 inches and the height is 4 inches. Then I'm going to go over to my color and change that to white because that's what color my subway tile is. Next, I'm going to go over to text and I am going to search for... Cricut Sands. You'll want to use a bold text for this. I'm using Cricut Sands. You can use Times New Roman also. And I'm just going to hit my caps lock and type in mom. Then I'm just going to line this up with this rectangle. I like how that looks. I'm going to highlight over both of these. Then I'm going to go to align and center just to see how it looks all centered up. And I like the sizing for that. Now I'm going to add my next text. So I'm going to go to text. Then I'll go up to font and exit out of this. Then I'm going to type in I love glitter. This is the most popular font for the knockout text, and I downloaded this from defont.com. If you've never downloaded from defont.com before, I have a video showing how to do that, so I will link that down below. I'm gonna select this. I'm going to use my son and daughter's name, so I'm gonna start typing in my son's name. But in between both of their names, I want a heart, and I want to show you an easy way to find glyphs. I'm on a Mac computer, so if you have a Windows, I did make a video showing how to do this on a Windows computer, so I can leave that linked down below. But on a Mac, what you'll do is go down and select the launch pad. I'm going to search for font, and you'll want to go to font book. I already have it highlighted since I was looking at it earlier, but these are all of my fonts that I've downloaded. You can click through each of these, but I'm gonna go back to I Love Glitter, and here's all the different glyphs that you can use. They have an open heart and a solid heart, but I like the open heart, so I'm just gonna use that. What I'm gonna do is hit Command C on my computer to copy it. Then I'm gonna go back over to Cricut, and I'll hit Command V. And you can see it pulls it right in there. Now I'll type my daughter's name in. I'm going to make this bigger to bring the letters closer together. To do this, you'll have to go over to your letter spacing and bring that in. I bring it in as far as it can go until I have to go in and manually do some of it myself. And apparently Cricut is coming out with a new update with helping with kerning letters. So I don't know if it does it automatically for you or if it just makes it a little easier. To line up these a little bit better, I'm going to ungroup and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Then I'm just gonna bring these together a little bit better. I like to highlight over several of the letters that are already lined up well and move it together. It makes it a little bit easier. Now that I have all of these attached the way that I like it, I need to weld all the letters together. They're ungrouped right now, so they're each their own layer. So I'm going to highlight over the whole thing, and you'll want to weld this instead of attach. So I'll come down here and hit weld. I'm also looking at my letters in mom, and it looks like the M is spaced out a little bit further. So what I'm going to do is select that and hit ungroup. I'm going to hit shift on my keyboard and move the M over just a little bit. When I hit shift, it keeps it still in line at the bottom. I think that looks a little bit better. Now I'm going to select each letter and I'm going to weld these also because now they're three separate layers. The weld button is really important in this project because we're going to be slicing Josh and Quinn out of mom and you can only slice two layers at a time. So if all these layers were not welded together, then you wouldn't be able to do that. Now it's the really fun part. It's the offset part and this is so much easier than it used to be. In my old video that I had, 
uh, you have to go to the print screen and save an image and it didn't line up very well. So if you've watched one of my old videos of that, this is gonna be so much easier. I also use the Fonto app, which is a totally different app and it's nice to do it all in one place. I have my text highlighted. Now what I'm gonna do is go up to my offset up here and this is where you can adjust it. You can make this bigger or smaller. This is going really slow. You can see at the top the little green dash going across the screen. It's taking it a while, but here is what it looks like bigger. But for this type of project, I really wanna make it smaller. So I want the shadow layer to be a little bit smaller, so I am going to try it like this and hit apply. For some reason, it only did the dot to the eye, but I'm wondering if it's because it's welded together. So I think I'm going to hit undo and try it not welded together. Okay, I had to redo the mom part, but now I'm going to try this again with this not welded together. So I'll come up to offset. Okay, I like that. I'm gonna hit apply. So that worked. So just an FYI, if you're doing this, wait to weld your letters together before you do the offset because it looks like it wasn't working that way. Now I wanna weld my letters together, but it's going to be easier for me to hide the shadow piece. So I'm gonna come over here where it says text offset and hide that. Then I'm gonna highlight over this whole thing and weld it back together. Now I'm gonna go back and find my text offset and I will unhide that. Next, what I want to do is size this text within the mom. So I'm going to highlight over both of these. You can see over in the layers panel that it's two layers. I'm going to group them together so it's easier to size it but keep both the same size. Then I'll bring it over my text and I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. I'm also going to highlight over this entire thing. I'll hit align and center. I think that looks really cute like that. Now I'm ready to slice it out. So I'm gonna select this and hide my rectangle. Then I'm gonna select over Josh and Quinn. I still have this group together, so I need to hit ungroup. I'm gonna grab my text and I'm gonna move it down out of the way. So now I'm ready to slice. And once again, you can only slice two layers at a time. So we have mom as one layer and then we have the text offset as another layer. I'm gonna highlight over the entire thing, then I'll come down here and hit slice. At first it looks like nothing happened, but you can see in the layers panel it says slice result. What you'll wanna do is just slide these out of here. And it still looks like it didn't do anything, but there is one more layer in there. So all of this is just extra pieces that you don't need. So what I like to do is just highlight over the whole thing and hit delete. Now we have mom here and we have our letters. So what I like to do is just bring this over here. I don't even care if it's lined up much and I'm gonna highlight over both. I'll go to align and hit center. So I think that looks really cute and it was really easy to do. Once again, you can also make the knockout text bigger by making the offset bigger. What I'm doing with this is putting it on subway tile and my mom letters is going to be floral vinyl and the other letters where it says Josh and Quinn, I'm just gonna keep it black. So I'm gonna select on mom and I'm just gonna come up here and change it to pink so that I know it's a different vinyl and I want it to separate each one on a different mat. Now I'm ready to click on make it. The Joshua and Quinn is wider than 11 and a half inches. So I'm using a roll of vinyl so that'll work. I just need to make sure to use my 12 by 24 mat. So that's what it's saying up here. I'll hit okay. And you can see it separated each of these onto different mats. Now I'm going to click continue. I'm just gonna select vinyl for my settings. And now I'll show you how I do this on the Cricut machine. I'm using permanent Cricut adhesive vinyl. It was the only one I had with a roll to be larger than 12 inches, but normally I would use Caesar Easy Weed. You might have noticed that I have a new table. My husband and I also moved into a new house and I have my own craft room now. Before I had it in the basement and shared it with my kids toy room and a lot of my husband's office things. So I'm excited to get it set up. I'm thinking about doing a craft room tour when I'm done getting it all organized. 
I'm using Cricut Adhesive Vinyl. This is a floral pattern. Even though this pattern is so pretty, I wouldn't recommend this one because it's removable. I would choose some type of permanent adhesive vinyl and you shouldn't have to seal it at all with the permanent. Once I was done with my project, I realized I lost part of my M. You can see that I lost it here. So what I did was go back and use the contour button in Cricut Design Space to cut out just that one piece that I lost and then I just added it to the tile. This black vinyl wouldn't stay flat because it was on a roll, so I decided to weed it on the sticky part of the mat. I spray rubbing alcohol onto the tile to clean it off and it was pretty dirty. You want to clean your surface for your vinyl to stick down well. I found this subway tile at Home Depot and it was $1.19 for the size I got which was 16 inches for the width and 4 inches for the height. They had a whole bunch of different sizes there. Now I'm just measuring to find the center. Does anyone else have a hard time lining vinyl up on whatever blank you're adding it to? It's definitely one of my biggest challenges. I'm using Clear Duck brand contact paper as my transfer paper and I place it over the vinyl. Next, I line up my vinyl on the tile and set it down. Then I remove the transfer sheet. It's so funny because I'm looking right at the M and I didn't even notice that I lost part of it until I was totally done with the project. Now I'm ready to add the other text. I add the transfer sheet to it, then remove the backing of the vinyl. I sometimes like placing my scraper tool right behind the backing of the vinyl to help me remove it a little bit easier. I started trying to line this up with the parchment paper method, but decided it was actually easier to do it without. This was somewhat hard to line it up because the offset was so thin. I hovered the entire text over the offset and tried to line it up before pressing it down. It took me a while to commit to pressing the vinyl down, so I skipped past a little of that. And here's how it looks when it's completely finished. I really love the pattern design with this and mom. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and I would love it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new here and I hope you all have a great day.